If you are 22 years old and graduating from college, if you're 22 years old and not graduating from college, if you are 22 years old, you are entering, first of all, some of the greatest years of your life, A, but B, this. This is the moment. Watch this video twice. If mama's watching this, send this to your daughter Sally right now because you have to understand, this next five year window is when you don't go practical and safe. This is not the time to get the job mom wanted you to. This is not the time to try to maximize as much money so you can buy a a fat whip. This is the time to realize that you have a five year window and it's three for some, it's eight for others, but this is a five year window for you to attack the life that you want to win, not because it's the secret or because the world's so zen because it's hard as out there. As a matter of fact, I'm probably more scared about your naivete to how hard it, class is easy, right? What you've been doing for the last 16 years is easy. It's a bullshit game. It's structured, it's easy. The world, this thing, this thing is hard. However, that contradicts what I'm gonna tell you right now, which is this is the best and easiest five years of your life because this is when you need to attack what you love and what you want to do. Here's why. You don't have all the baggage. You may have college loans, respect, it's hard as shit. You may have the expectations of your parents, mentally hard, fake hard. You may have a lot of other things, but this is exactly when you can live with four roommates in a basement and eat fast food. Do you understand? This is not when the baby's there, some of you have babies. This is not when you've been married and you promised. This is not when the world has sucked out all your dreams and hopes yet. You still got this window. And yet, so many of you are so hungry for short-term, short-term gains. Like maximizing the job that paid you $3,000 more but it's not as fun but you want that $3,000. For what? For what? For a new iPhone? For what? You get to live life one time. And this is the time right now to understand what's actually happening and actually map your behavior to something that will impact you for the next 80 years. So promise me, promise me, all you youngsters that are watching this right now in the comments, because I'll jump in and talk to you. Promise me that you understand that the land grab of happiness starts right now. That you don't have to worry about getting that job. What you should do is go and travel and learn. Go and start that business that you've always wanted. Hook up with those three teammates and start that band you've always wanted. This is the time to be massively risk, massively risk oriented. I know that this is when you're supposed to grow up and go see the world, but guess what? The world isn't what mommy and daddy told you. The world is exactly going to be what it's going to be with or without the way you thought it was gonna be. A ton of shit is gonna change. The world changes every goddamn day. Right now what you need to recognize is you can afford to. This is what I want to share. It doesn't matter how far you might rise. At some point, you are bound to stumble because if you're constantly doing what we do, raising the bar, if you are constantly pushing yourself higher, higher, the law of averages, not to mention the myth of Icarus, uh, predicts that you will at some point fall. And when you do, I want you to know this, remember this, There is no such thing as failure. Failure is just life trying to move us in another direction. Now, when you're down there in a hole, it looks like failure. So this past year, I had to spoon feed those words to myself. And when you're down in the hole, when that moment comes, it's really okay to feel bad for a little while. Give yourself time to mourn what you think you may have lost, but then, Here's the key, learn from every mistake because every experience, encounter, and particularly your mistakes are there to teach you and force you into being more of who you are. And then figure out what is the next right move. And the key to life is to develop an internal, moral, emotional GPS that can tell you which way to go. How do you define personal success? The, uh, the amount of misery that you take in versus put out.
I, like if you <laughs> like how much pain is coming in and how much pleasure is going out to other people. It's like a like a plant, you know, just CO two and O two. Like like like, are, is your account in the black? <laughs> oh, as far as like, so if somebody hurts you, if somebody punches you in the face, uh, and it hurts like hell, and you're really mad. You're an unsuccessful life if you then go punch five people in the face because you took in pain and caused five times as much. Even if they're, but you know, look, if you're John Wick and all those guys are like <laughs> face punchers, so look, that's, there's nuance there, I guess. That's why we love those movies. Like the idea that you could solve the world's problems by just punching more people than you got punched. But, uh, but, it, but in reality, so I think success is defined by can you actually convert when somebody punches you in the face? Can you actually then go put on a one-woman show about why did I make it a woman just for the face punching? <laughs> I was I was like, why don't you do that thing where you switch pronouns like like every other time? And that's the one you chose. And then, and it was like an unfortunate coincidence. It's like if you get punched in the face, then you a woman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought the phrase "one man show" would be so oppressive. Like that's the patriarchy like, coming down. One, it's a one man show in my uh, hypothetical theatrical endeavor. If you get punched in the face and put on a one man show called "I Got Punched in the Face," <laughs> and it's like people that go into it that are having bad days who didn't even get punched in the face, or or or, or are like fighting cancer or something, that they come out going like, "I feel so much better now that I saw that guy's show. Thank God he got punched in the face." <laughs> that's success. You can't just wait for inspiration to act. That's the biggest mistake people make. Don't wait to be inspired to do the action. You have to do the action first and then you'll be inspired. So what I would do is I would sit there and draw out the comic and I would come up with it. But some days I'd come home from school, sit down and go, I'm just going to wait for the inspiration to hit me. I'm going to wait for the idea to come fully formed. And when I got a joke, then I'll go draw it. And I would sit there for maybe three or four hours and then go, all right, screw it. I got to get up and I got to do the process. I got to sit there and just start drawing. I don't even know why or how I'm going to get there. And then two things would come together and it would be, oh, there's an idea. Oh, this is the first panel. This is the second panel. And then it would come together. Always. It would not take very long. I would fight that process so much because what was I doing? I was waiting for inspiration before I acted. It's always the other way around. Act first. Then the inspiration will come. Draw first. Then the inspiration will come. Just start shooting. Then the inspiration will come. Just start moving. Then the inspiration will come. Don't wait. So many people wait or, are, or tell you they're going to write this novel or they're going to do this or they're going to make this film. They never do it because they're waiting for all this stuff to come to them. It comes through doing it. But you are very much in control of your career. It's not, yeah. it's not an easy thing to do. How did you yeah. learn how to do that? Tell me about the process of learning how to be in control. Well, I, I've always been a control freak from a very young age. Um, but I would credit my management for that. Like, when I'm like, really, really tired, and I'm like, can you just decide? Like, I can't be bothered right now. Like, no, nope. staying up till 5 a.m. until you understand everything, and then you can give me a yes or a no with a good reason and stuff like that. So definitely my management. That's good management. Yeah, oh no, my management are great. Like, and also, like, they want me to make the decisions on everything, small things, big things, whatever. Do you know what I mean? So that. Um, and it's, it's my music, and I'm the artist, so why is someone in a boardroom who's never written a record in their life should be making decisions for me? No. We are the artists, and we should be allowed to decide. Through growing up, what I've discovered is that this world is a very vast, a very wonderful and beautiful one, and there are so many things to discover, but the most important journey I think all of us will go through is the journey in ourselves, to find our truth, to find who we are and what makes us happy and in our culture we are told that if we're beautiful if we're skinny if we're successful famous if we fit in um, if everyone loves us that we'll be happy but uh, that's not entirely true I'm gonna start with a poem that I wrote <laughs> <laughs> when I wasn't very happy um, I actually wrote this a year ago, but again, as if you know depression, it comes back. It's a reoccurring thing that you can't really sort away. Anyway, <clears throat> who am I? Who am I trying to be? Not myself, anyone but myself. Living in a fantasy to bury the reality, making myself the mystery, a strong facade disguising the misery. Empty but beyond the point of emptiness full to the brim of fake confidence, a guard that will never be broken because I broke a long time ago. I am hurting, but don't tell anyone. No one needs to know. 
Don't show or you've failed. Always okay, always fine, always on show. The show must go on, it will never stop. The show must not go on, but I know it will. I give up, I give up giving up, I am lost. I don't need to be saved, I need to be found. Basically, it's kind of just <laughs> the same reoccurring thing of, uh, yeah, not knowing who you are.